Hello uh, everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will present this K. This K is large K, okay? capital K. It is different from the small K. Concept of K, and then I also explain fourth order approach uh, to get the P shear. Firstly, uh, let's look at the cantilever column. This is cantilever column, subject to the axial force at the top. We always uh, consider this deformed shape uh, when it solves this problem. Deformed shape like that. So the displacement at the top is defined as delta. We take out this part uh, as a free body diagram like that. At the bottom, uh, we have the moment, P delta moment like that. And then this free body diagram, as you see, this member deformed uh, like this right hand side so the moment should be applied clockwise okay, and internal moment as x increase the rate of slope increase so the sign is plus and internal equal ei y to prime this is why applied here this is y from this uh, free body diagram you can establish equilibrium equation and internal minus counterclockwise p delta y and then this deformation equal y so p y equal to zero due to some moment equilibrium right and then m internal moment ei y to prime you move this p delta to right hand side and p delta divided by ei and then if you replace p over ei is equal to k square like that it's k you must uh, be uh, cautious on this k is a uh, small k here k is square we replace p over ei with k square okay yeah small k keep in mind so uh, this general solution equal y equal a sin kx plus b cosine kx plus delta right you have a three or no one two three so you need three equation you have a three boundary condition y zero equal zero there is no displacement at x equal zero right how about the slope here slope also zero right you have displacement at the top y l what is displacement is delta uh, originally defined as delta right you have a three uh, boundary condition then if you solve uh, this differential equation using uh, this uh, three boundary condition you can ultimately get pcr critical load pi square e i over 4 l square okay uh, i will not show some detail procedure uh, you can see uh, you can leave for some textbook uh, the time to lecture is uh, limited so i just show uh, this result uh, so the important message uh, uh, here uh, is to uh, introduce large k value this large k uh, is called effective length factor uh, this k can be calculated square root to pe pe is oil bucking load right pcr is uh, this member uh, critical load that is a pi square ei 4l square pi square ei over 4l square oil bucking load is a pi square ei over l square this is uh, some bucking load over pin and color right is equal to yeah uh, this cantilever length is L, okay? So we consider pin and length. The here pin and at the top there is hinge, right? So simulate the pin and column. You can extend this imaginary part like this. Just the reflect uh, of the real part is imaginary part. So like that. So. Uh, this is L. So this is 2L. This pin and the length is called KL. KL equal 2L. That means K equal 2. We can uh, get the K value using this kind of figure. Or you can get from this equation. Your own PCR is here, denominator. Uh, the denominator is all about load. Then you can get K2. Okay. So you can get uh, 
this k value using one of these two and then let's look at the end last hand column and the last lane column like that then we can draw the curve like this we have inflection point here you know inflection point this curvature changing point from here to here the center of the curvature somewhere here from here to here the center of curvature somewhere here so this inflection point indicate the changing point of coverage the characteristic of this inflection point is that the moment is equal to zero here such as some hinge point okay hinge boundary so by the way uh, in order to establish the differential equation to solve this problem we take out uh, this part like that we draw the free body diagram this is p yeah, reaction and then uh, this is fixed end we have some moment here reaction moment let's say ma we have the shear force in fixed end color yeah, that is free body diagram this shear force occur due to this moment so here if you consider free body diagram like that just to pass this inflection point up to here then the m internal moment should be counterclockwise to make this curve okay so uh, m internal equal minus eiy to prime if you consider pre body diagram up to here then draw like that then internal moment equal eiy to prime because as x increase the slope increase so plus eiy to apply and then uh, the m internal moment direction should be clockwise in order to make this right hand the deflection right so from this uh, free body diagram you can establish the uh, equilibrium equation right so let's look at this one uh, counterclockwise so minus m internal moment p times y v times x right minus ma equal to zero right yeah minus m internal moment equal minus eiy to prime so eiy to prime right and then uh, divide by ei in every term then y to prime p over eiy like that if you let p over ei is equal to k square it is a small k square okay uh, it is different from the large k small k square then you can get this equation some general solution is this y equal a sin kx plus b cos sin kx is homogeneous solution equal to zero uh, for right hand side uh, you can get this particular solution minus vxp plus ma over p if you uh, input this value into here you can get the same right hand side value so this is a particular solution you have for unknown right a b v and m a so you need the four boundary condition as you see here the displacement at the bottom equal zero at the top equal zero the slope at the bottom equal zero slope and top equal zero because it's a fixed end okay you have four different boundary condition then if you solve this problem you can get pcr equal four pi square ei over S square. Uh, in order to get the uh, k value here, I would like to introduce another way. Another way is that 4 pi square e over S square, and then general the equation is this one: pi square e i over k L square, large k L square. Okay. You establish this equation, and then in order to get the 4 k should be 0.5 from this equation. This is effective length factor, as I mentioned before. KL equal effective length. Okay. K equal effective length factor. KL equal effective length. KL is equivalent to pin and column length with the same critical load. So as you see here, this is the inflection point, inflection point. As I mentioned before, the moment at this inflection point is, is equal to zero. Okay, so looks like boundary condition. This inflection point, the distance from here to here, can you guess the distance? It is 0.5 
m. So this 0.5 is k factor. The distance between inflection point, this k factor uh, reflect boundary condition. k can be also obtained like that, square root p over pcr. You can get the k value, large k value, in several different ways. From this equation, or equivalent pin and length, or this equation. I'd like to introduce the various k value. Yeah, this pin and uh, column case, uh, just before we uh, mentioned 0.5, right? This fixed bottom top hinge, in that case, the inflection point here, from at the top to this inflection point length is 0.7. That is the fixed and the top is the uh, roller. Uh, the horizontally free okay rotate no rotational angle here so here the inflection point here this is the real part if you extend the imaginary part like that yeah this is the inflection point imaginary part so from here to here is l from here to your 0.5L, 0.5L, so L. So K value equal 1. Pin and column, this one is L. This is 1. Yeah, this cantilever column, the original length is L. But the inflection point here and another inflection point here, yeah, hinge point, not the inflection point, hinge point, okay? Because there is no moment equal 0 uh, point. So from here to here, this this L, L, 2L, length between some hinge point. Yeah. So K equal 2. How about this one? This is a hinge. At the top is the rotation is prevented. Lateral displacement is free. Okay. So this is a hinge, the real part. If you extend the imaginary part like that, the distance from here to here is 2L. So K equal 2. That is a theoretical value. If you solve uh, differential equation, you can get this value. So let's look at this one. As you see the uh, column here, if you have some larger k, that means the boundary is weak. If we consider uh, this cantilever and this fixed one, which boundary is weaker? Uh, this cantilever is weaker. So weaker column has large k value. Boundary is weak. So you, you have the small PCR, small K case, you have a strong boundary, and then you have a large PCR. So if you consider now the recommended design value, look at this one, there's a fixed end, but fixed end condition is a very difficult uh, to see in the real world. There is a little rotation uh, usually exist. So considering that kind of a real situation, we have a larger K. That means we make a little weak boundary condition uh, to consider the real world situation. But this one was a fixed one, so we use a little larger value. Fixed one, larger value, okay? How about this hinge case? Contrary, ideal hinge is very difficult to make in the real world there is some friction that means k factor must be smaller than 1.0 but the safety we use 1.0 this one also this fixed and is very difficult to make so larger k value is used how about this one at the bottom there is some friction if we consider some friction not ideal hinge the k value become small right here there is no rotation but it is difficult to make no rotation condition in the real world so we have to use the larger k value consider this one so here bottom smaller top larger so plus minus just let's say uh, compensated okay so the same 2.0 is used generally if we know the k value like that then you can get directly PCR equal pi square EI KL square here. You just input this value into this equation. Then you can get PCR. It is simple way. Okay. Uh, next issue of uh, this lecture is that force order differential equation. Force order differential equation. Up to now, we just uh, treat the second order differential equation y2 prime like that that is second order in fourth order differential equation i will the, uh, introduce 
y4 prime the let's compare the second order and fourth order second order equation governing differential equation is homogeneous solution and uh, non-homogeneous solution a particular solution that kind of equation yeah so we have the different different solution corresponding to different boundary condition if boundary condition is different we have different uh, solution but in first order the equation is independent on boundary condition regardless of boundary condition we have the one governing differential equation in view of uh, we have just one governing differential equation yeah, it is more, more convenient compared to second order uh, differential equation so one governing differential equation that means we have uh, one general solution regardless of boundary condition let's get fourth order differential equation we take very small segment the length is dx we consider okay x y plane okay, we consider very small segment of dx from the member so a and b we consider the general case we have actual force and shear force and moment right at B, uh, the distance is dx, then we have q plus dq dx dx. Uh, there must be some uh, difference in q. How about moment? If there is distance here, then we have also m plus dm dx dx. There must be some difference in moment also. How about the P. If P equal here, at the actual force at P is also P because the actual force equilibrium must be satisfied. Then why the moment and then this lateral load are changing? Why? Because the moment and then lateral load, they are correlated. So that means Q influence M, M influence Q. They are correlated. So there must be some change, but this actual force, it does not uh, influence on Q and M. And then sigma F X must be satisfied. So this P then uh, download P, that must be identical. You know, some general the FM approach also the same, the concept. So from here, if you take the moment at P, then Q DX, P dy moment here and then you have moment minus counterclockwise minus distance if you take moment here you don't have any distance is vanished to to um, it uh, go through that uh, moment center uh, that is the equilibrium equation from here yeah mm disappeared then q equal this if we move, move this on right hand side we can get this equation this is equation one huh? Uh, now I am making the fourth order equation, y4 prime equation. If you take the uh, schema fy equal to zero, then you have this term, this fy term, y term. So from here, you get minus q, q like that. So delete it, then you have this dq, dx equal to zero because dx is not zero. So dq dq dx equal zero and then from uh, equation one equation you have the equation q equation here okay dm dx like that so if input this equation here you get this equation so your m equal minus ei y2 prime minus ei d square y dx square right then if you input this equation here you get ei yeah this is uh, second and yeah, second again then fourth okay fourth differential equation and then this is a minus so minus minus plus plus L. so p like that so if you write uh, in simple form ei y fourth prime y two prime that is fourth order differential equation let k square equal p over ei then that equation can be written like this and general solution of this uh fourth order equation equal y equal a sine kx b cosine kx plus cx plus d that is general 
solution. Whatever the boundary conditions are. Yeah. Regardless of boundary condition, we have the same identical general solution in force of the differential equation. Then what is different? From now on, we have to consider boundary condition. Boundary condition is different. Yeah, this pin and the column, cantilever column, fixed end column. Only boundary condition is different. So the solution, general solution is identical. Boundary condition, as you see, y0, displacement, bottom, 0, top, 0, y2 prime. What, what is y2 prime? What is ei y2 prime? That is a moment, okay? ei is not 0. So y2 prime must be 0 at the bottom because it is hinge. At the top, moment 0. So y2 prime l equal 0. So, so you have a four unknown A, B, C, D. So you need always four equation in the fourth order differential uh, equation. Okay. Yeah. So if you use this equation, okay, uh, let's take the second derivative of y. Y two prime zero first. Uh, two prime zero. Uh, sine zero equal zero. So you have minus b k square equal zero. K square is not zero. K square equal p over e i. P exists, so k square is not zero. So p must be zero. So y zero here. Uh, then sine sine uh, deleted b. Uh, x, c, x, delete, b, d, b, d equal 0. So, b, 0 here, so d also 0. So, remaining equation is y equal a sine kx plus c, x because b and d equal 0. So, y, l, a sine kl, c, l equal 0. y, 2 prime, l, a and c, then sine kl, l minus kl. A and C is not zero. If A zero and C zero, there is no deflection. Then we cannot solve this problem. So this determinant should be zero in order to satisfy this equation. Then K square L sine S equal zero. K square is not zero because P is not zero. L is not zero. So sine K equal zero. We have the same equation uh, compared to the second order differential equation like that. Okay? So you get the picture. How about fixed end column? Yeah, general solution is identical. What is that? A sine KL plus B, B cosine KL plus CX plus D. Okay? Only boundary condition is different. The displacement at bottom and top equal zero. The slope at bottom and top equal zero. If you use this boundary condition, you can ultimately get this PCR. However, however cantilever column, you have the boundary condition at the bottom displacement zero, slope zero, right? How about that the moment at the top? That is y to prime L, Why? Ei y to prime, that is moment. At the top, L, okay? That is, there is no moment at the top, equal zero. And then uh, now we have three the boundary conditions. You need one more boundary condition. What is that? You have to establish using some sure force. How about the show force, the VEXT, external show force. Let's look at the show force, uh, the perpendicular this uh, member axis. Due to this P, you consider this component value that is per perpendicular loading at the member axis. So VEXT, V external load equal P uh, and DX and DY. That is. Uh, uh, this perpendicular component okay so dx dy equal uh, py prime and then how about we internal internal moment equal minus dm dx if you take a derivative regarding moment that is short force internal short force so minus ei y three prime external one and internal must be equal then you can get this equation y3 prime plus k square y prime equal 0. That is another equation for a cantilever color. If you use this for equation, you can get PCR. Pi square EI over S square. If you solve that, that one. You understand? Everybody, bye.